Okay, so similar to the normal common source that uh, we actually looked at the input and output resistance after calculating the gain, we're going to look at the input and output resistance of a common source stage with the generation, right? So uh, the first thing that we need to do is to actually draw the small signal model for this, right? Um, the small signal model is going to look like this. So I'm going to have the VN. Or actually, let's draw the actual signal source. V in comes to the gap, VGS. The source is connected to ground, well, through an RS. And um, there is a drain, GM, VGS. And for this purpose, it says lambda is greater than zero, so let's actually keep or not so that our solution is as generic as possible and then i'm going to have an rd so this time r not an rd remember when you have a common source with degeneration r not and rd are not in parallel anymore because before r not was connected between the drain uh, let me use another color okay between drain and source and source in the normal common source was actually grounded and because rd was also between drain and uh, ground, they were in parallel. But now RD is, is between drain and ground, but R0 is actually between drain and source. So they're not in parallel. That's one of the most common mistakes that students do. So be aware of that. So <clears throat> looking at the input resistance, that's the resistance looking into here. I can see that, well, even if I have an RG, I forgot the RG. So that's RG. So even if I have that, the resistance that I see let me actually draw this correctly. So there should be an RG here. And then I have this resistance looking into here, RN. My resistance is going to be basically RN is going to be RG plus infinity. So infinity. So nothing has changed on the input side. How about the output side? Well, we're going to do the same. We're going to use the same approach that we did with um, with the normal common source. So we first turn off the power supply, the, the input uh, source. So we turn this thing off, short it to ground, and then connect the output to a test voltage and a test current. So there's a Vx, and I'm going to call this Ix. Okay. Actually, um, Okay. Now, there is one little thing that uh, you have to consider, and that's basically the fact that I'm actually interested not in the resistance I'm seeing from here, but in the resistance that I see from here, right? That's my output resistance, because whatever I see from here is going to be in parallel with the uh, the RD, right? So what I actually need to do is that I have to actually, I'm interested to know what is this resistance. Once I find that R out, then I can say that R out is from this point that I'm highlighting with purple color to ground, and that is in parallel with RD. Okay, so in reality, what I need to do is to actually connect my Vx and Ix to this part of my circuit. Plus minus vx and this is going to be my ix okay so now let's do the analysis uh, the first thing i can say is that well because there's no current here there's no voltage across this rg so i might as well assume that this voltage and this there's no voltage across the rg so i can actually assume that it's short right now um, this tells me that if i define this node let's call this node uh, I can't use X, so let's say VY, right? What is VY? It's basically VY is equal to this node to ground. Well, VGS is ground to this node, so it's going to be negative VGS. Okay, but then can I write the VY based on the current passing through this RS? Well, what is the current? If you think about it, what is the current that is passing through this IS, this I1, right? I know that I1 is the addition of this current plus that current, right? 
but I can write a case here at this node y and then another case here at this node x and then combine them or I can be smart about it and say that well this i2 and i3 are going to add up to i1 but then they're also this i3 and i2 right so I know that i2 plus i3 is equal to ix i2 plus i3 is also equal to i1 therefore i1 and ix are the same thing right now knowing that i can simply say vy is equal to ix times rs right because it's i1 times rs okay so now this means that my vgs is equal to negative rs ix okay now let's write the kcl at the node at the output okay so if i write it i2 plus i3 ix is equal to i2 plus i3 therefore it is equal to i2 is equal to gm vgs plus i3 is equal to vx minus vy divided by r naught okay now let's replace them i know that gm is well gm vgs is i just got it from here it's basically negative rs ix so negative rs ix plus vx is vx but vy is really rs ix so minus rs ix divided by r naught good i basically simplified my expression my equations as basically this was ix Base, uh, my, my equation only includes known parameters such as gm rs and r naught and ix and vx that i want to find their relationship with each other great so let's simplify this so i have uh, vx over r naught on this side so let's take every term that has ix to the other side of the equation i have ix times one plus gm rs plus rs over r naught and on the other side i just have vx over r naught can further simplify this and say that ix times r naught plus gm rs r naught plus R rs over r naught is equal to vx over r naught then r naught and r naught cancel with each other and this will give me vx over ix equal to r naught plus rs plus gm r naught rs for most cases uh, because rs is a well a decent resistance r naught is actually quite a high resistance you can imagine then gm is also a number that is not so small it's just a decent number you can imagine that this term is going to be a lot larger than rs and r naught because it's rs times r naught right so you can most of the time you can actually say this is almost equal to gm r naught rs okay so the output resistance if i see it from so this was r out but then if i see from this point r out to let's say r out to is going to be equal to rd in parallel with the r out that i got from there which is gm r not rs okay so what does this tell me um well comparing this to the normal common source i can see that instead of having just r naught now i have this r naught times rs times gm right so definitely my output resistance became become bigger right now <clears throat> is that a good thing well if you're talking about an amplifier which we have been talking which common source with degeneration is not really a good amplifier we saw that the gain is actually uh reduced by factor of one plus gm rs in the previous slides so it's not really good for a for an amplifier but then if you think about this as a as a common uh, as a current source then we know that for a current source what we want is really 
the transistor to have an almost constant current at the output, meaning that we want the output resistance of a current source to be as high as possible, ideally infinity. That's an ideal current source, right? Remember that when we were talking about in the DC analysis of a MOSFET, we said that for a normal MOSFET, this was the triad region and the saturation. We wanted this thing to be constant, but then because of channel length modulation, um, I had this little slope of 1 over R0, right? Now, if I actually add a resistor in the source like this, my uh, so this is basically ID versus VTS. So I'm expecting because the output resistance is actually increasing, one over output resistance is actually decreasing. So I'm going to get a flatter response, which means a better current source. So a, co a common source stage with degeneration is going to give me a better current source. So if you want to use your uh, transistor in the in the uh, as a current source load, for example, or like generally as a current source. Uh, and you're not using it as an amplifier, definitely you want to go with the source degeneration. We're going to see examples of this in the future slides so that you get a better sense of things. Okay, let's see an example. So um, the example says, based on the previous slides equation, can you find the output resistance of the circuit below without drawing the small signal circuit? So we know how to actually do this with drawing small signal circuit. We just draw the small signal circuit. We connect the V test and I test and calculate the, diff calculate the relationship with each other and done, right? But then this is really asking us to use our knowledge from the previous slides and probably the slides before that to actually calculate this R out. Okay, I would say that first let's write down our uh, basically equation from the previous slide, right? Um, we know that R out for a common source stage with degeneration should be equal to RS plus R naught plus GM RS R naught RS or RS R naught doesn't really matter. Now um, these are for the transistor that is closest to the R out. So we're talking about RS one R R naught one GM one R naught one RS one right. So Looking at the circuit, I can say that if this M2 was the resistor, if, if I, instead of this M2, I had a resistor to ground, let's call it RM2, then I have the exact same circuit. This would have been my RS. This is the, the, this is the resistor that I see in the source of my M1. Therefore, the R out would have been, well, RM2 plus R01 plus GM1, R01, R M2. Okay. So what is this RM2? Well, basically it is the resistance that they see from the, the drain to ground. Well, that's the output resistance of a normal common source stage. Because if you look at this M2 by itself, it's a common source stage with the source connected to ground. So what is the resistance? So this RM2 is really equal to R0. If I look at this from, from this point to ground, I'm going to only see R0. Don't believe me, draw the small signal model, add, add the V test and I test, and you will see it, right? We saw this a lot uh, repeatedly in the previous slides. So this is going to be equal to R0 2. So this is R0 2 actually, plus R0 1, plus GM1, R0 1, R0 2. Okay? So we really didn't need to actually draw the small signal model to actually calculate the R out. I can just basically, from this point forward, we're going to we're gonna relate whatever circuit that we see to the circuits that we know. Up to now, we know common source and common source with degeneration. All of the circuits that we're going to see from this point forward could be somehow related to these two or the other configurations that we're going to discuss in the future, which are common gate and common drain, right? So in this case, it was a common source with degeneration. M1 was our basically main transistor. M2 was just simply uh, kind of generating a resistance at the source of M1. So I found that resistance. I replaced that resistance. Um, I, I replaced the whole M2 with that resistance. And then, well, I could use the expression from previous slide to write the 
output resistance.